<clears throat> All right, ladies and gents, let me get this thing centered real quick. All right, so Riverside chat about, uh, well, let's see here, it's been a few topics lately. We'll just go with um, where we are now. Well, looking at California because it is an indicator state just like anyone else when it comes down to the economy, it, we all look to California as far as that's concerned. Um, can't say I've seen a whole lot of commerce been going right and proper, you know, in grocery stores, yeah, but, they, you know, it's all big box stores and stuff. Ain't really been uh, a whole lot of the um, mom and pop shops lately, and I, I'm even guilty of this. You know, I'm not proud of it, but the reality is, is that mom and pop shops can't sell things for the same price that the big box store can and it's totally destroyed our economy when the economy tends to go south in any situation you know uh, well you, you can normally tell first by uh, mom and pop shops when they go down and, and it, lately especially here in Blythe it's a small town uh, you know, down here on the California, uh, Arizona, and Mexico border. Uh, we're just north of Yuma, about 30 minutes. Uh, anyways, the um, problem that I've been seeing is, is a lot of these mom and pop shops have been dying off. You know, just close for business, close for business, close for business, left and right. Even some of the, the smaller general stores are starting to go, and it's... It's irksome, to say the least. Anyways, um, other, in other news, <laughs> um, I gotta say, you know, folks being, uh, as they are in Washington. They're not brave enough to get up off their asses and come down here and actually see what's going on. You know, the reality of the situation is, is there's so much traffic, you can't be sure. You cannot be sure. I mean, just here on the river, there's so much boat traffic. Any navigable waterway is basically a highway. And, you know, for folks coming across the border I mean it's not fucking hard that's uh, easy so and going and saying oh well they can't come up there in Arizona and California say for a few spots let me point out to you they got a lot of spots over here that they can come up not all of them are next to the Colorado River however by the time they get here to Blythe they are normally on a boat at night or during the early hours of the morning. Sometimes during the midday or late afternoon when there's more traffic. Um, and you can definitely tell that these folks are not from in town. You can tell they're not from even... It, you can just tell by the way that they present themselves in public. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm known for walking around with a big old bushy beard. I'm known for walking around with ratty ass clothing. But I'm talking about... <laughs> You're going around in the clothes that present you as obviously a gangbanger or obviously from a specific background. And, you know... In America, if you pull that shit, you're likely to get your ass fucking basically torn a new one by the police or by Border Patrol or by whoever. And it, 
you're just putting yourself in this situation, all right? So, um, I'm not saying don't wear what you want to wear. I'm just saying think about it before you go out in public, you know? Public's a different place than in your own home. And when you go out in public, you should be somewhat presentable, all right? When I say somewhat presentable, I mean you have a an honest and open demeanor and be as helpful as you can be and as kind as you can be to people, you know, courtesy. It is not something that is just useless. It, it has its place. Use courtesy because courtesy goes a long ways. Let me put it this way. My dad used to say something about uh, the more ass you kiss, the more, the more lives you can save. It was something about... Uh, Anyways, uh, it was something about how if you don't have to fight, then the best philosophy is is just kiss ass, save face, and don't have to worry about it. If you have no other choice because time and time again, whatever you've done, whatever you you know you've asked around you form committees, you work towards a specific goal and aim, and nothing has gone your way. At this particular point, you have to look at the numbers, and the numbers don't lie. Computers fabricate a lot of statistics. It's interesting, to say the least, because when you look at statistics, and you look at the numbers presented, everything is run through an algebraic algorithm, which means that it's not exact, and the more zeros there are, the more room for error there is. So when you see these numbers presented to you as voting, you know, don't believe it. A lot of people don't vote that particular uh, manner. They're just registered as that manner, so they're expected to vote in that manner. Why do you think that Trump won? It's because a lot of people were caught up in the hype and they realized, wait a minute, you know, he's running both as an independent and as the Republican. I mean, he's got the wherewithal, to, you know, the clout to swing it. But when you take a step back and you look, you know, there were so many other... more appropriate candidates and I'm not talking Democrat or Republican here God and, and even you know though it's my my particular political leaning is to be independent I'm sorry to say this a hundred percent the independence should have won it, it, it's and in specific I'm, I'm not talking about you know just the, the candidates which I stood for. I'm talking about candidates that had, you know, just way better messages. Their names were on the ballot. They were all there and presented, and it's like they didn't exist. How can you explain that? I can explain it in one simple format. Your vote doesn't mean shit. Welcome to the 21st century, bro. The computer is almighty. Your vote doesn't mean a freaking thing. And the scariest bit of it all... <sighs> the people who are really running the show... How, how do you... How do you justify destruction of a nation of its resolve, of its character of its sustenance how do you push yourself to that extreme well it's pretty simple 
you fall for the bullshit. And I don't care what YouTube does with this video, particularly. I know at some point in time it will get around and folks are going to see it and they're going to understand. Your vote doesn't mean a fucking thing. I'm sad. It hurts. I'm an American born, bred. I literally bleed green. You know, as far as it's concerned, you know, you know how police bleed blue, freaking firefighters bleed red. I bleed green. I, I, my granddad was Navy. My own, of my uh, second cousins are Navy and Marines and Army and, and both my sisters are looking to be Navy. One of them is. And uh, salute to you, Navy personnel who are out there serving right now. You put your lives on the line in places where you shouldn't, act, you shouldn't have to be. And I respect you for that. See, our fight is here. Our problems are here. They're not in some godforsaken land somewhere. I hate that I had to say it that way, but it's true. You look at the reality of the situation, and it's our global stretching economy, our global stretching nation, I mean, it, and there's a lot of folks out there that actually run the situation, that ain't even in the, the continental United States is for sure, but this is where we love. This is our home. And home is something that everyone's a sucker for. You always want to try and go home. So nine times out of ten, they're going to try and come back here. This is where, this is, this is it. Yeah, sure, there's beautiful places around the world. I mean... I can't begin to name the places that, you know, I've seen just on YouTube, but also through alternative means, all right? It, some places are incredibly beautiful, and the beauty is literally there to be seen and sought if you look for it. But you have to look for it. You have to have love in your heart to look for it. And in order to have love in your heart, you actually have to be willing to go out of your way to do the right thing and have a moral center. And I, I, I know it sounds, oh, ooey gooey, all mushy, freaking, yeah, you know, super boy scout and all that. Guess what? I was a wee below. Yes, I was a boy scout. Some of the best times of my life, you know. It, that gave me a foundation to build upon, and because my dad wasn't always around, but he knew who to go to to gain that ner that knowledge and that foundation. Still, you know, him being around at times gave me other skills that the Boy Scouts never gave me. So, you know, it, it's. My life has been a, a beautiful journey, one that I respectively love and hate at the same time. <laughs> Probably because um, some of the things I've had to do, some of the people I've had to um, wrong or mislead or cause ill or even harm physically and I, I guess I, I will fest any situation said person is present I own up to my shit as I think we all should if you ain't willing to take your lumps don't freaking go and steal out the cookie jar I 
I try to abide by the law everywhere in any way I can. Irritating as it is, more and more the law is contextually unconstitutional in its entire format, in any formulation, in its very resolve or reason in some instances. Some instances can be misconstrued as being treasonous because of their blatant disregard for the the specific language within the Constitution and the amendments thereof. The Bill of Rights is specific on its meanings. And those of us who know both the Bill of Rights and the amendments understand what the amendments mean because we read the Bill of Rights, because we understand the Federalist Papers, and because we understand our history. It's very important to understand your history. If you don't, you can never understand what those words really mean. And I don't give a shit what you think about legalese this and law that. If you don't understand the foundation, you can never create proper law. Which means that that law is... It can be misconstrued. It can be taken out of context and used in ill manner against the public for wrong ideals. You never want that. It's a situation of you need to have a moral foundation. And the moral foundation comes from loving others as much as you love yourself. This is something that goes throughout all religions everywhere, which is the only reason why I think that religions even have anything right apart from faith. Faith is the act of hope in harsh times. It has nothing to do with your religion or your creator. It has to do with the act of hope. You are hoping things are going to get better. You are hoping, even if it's between you and God, you are hoping that things get better. Because that's what we want as people, is things to become better, to become more of an ease. Unfortunately, we, many things do exist in that resolve, like idle hands are the devil's workshop. No responsibilities can be misconstrued as irresponsibility. Ignorance could be misconstrued as stupidity. You know, I screwed up once, hey, <laughs> my bad. I screwed up twice. Wow, why didn't I learn the first time? <laughs> it's something you need to keep in mind at all times. Why well, didn't I learn the first time? Well, I wasn't paying attention to this, that, or the other. I wasn't paying attention to what I really needed to be paying attention to. Situational awareness, the world around you. And, you know, I know I'm not paying a lot of attention to the world around me because I'm using this as a backdrop. You know, the, 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 I'm at the actual riverside and relaxing uh, setting. But I'm trying to convey a message which can only be conveyed in a peaceful manner. And unfortunately, Guardsman Om does not work with this, okay? So, the places that I've been, the things I've seen, the people that I've had to deal with, all of this comes together in my knowledge of the world and how nobody has your best interest out. They have theirs, unfortunately. We all try to work towards helping each other at some point in time or another because we all have that conscientious thought. Hey, there's nobody else coming to their rescue. 
This person's fucked. What are we going to do? You know, and... Unfortunately, sometimes it is what it is. There's not a lot you can do. You you can try. And that's the important part, is you try. But when a situation is beyond your, your ability to resolve it, your ability to solve the solution, basically, is not within your hands or your capabilities, then you need to take a step back and let others do. Or, at the same time, you need to take a step back and work with others. I mean, where we stand is a situation that is ugly at the best. Nobody wants to be in this situation. Nobody enjoys this partisan conflict between all the states, between even people within the states. This is not a conflict of states' rights. This is a conflict of individual rights, individual freedoms and liberties. And this is something that our founding fathers fought for 200 some years ago. I mean, I'm not doing the, I'm not going to do the math right now. That's how important this situation is to me. I'm not going to do the freaking math. That is less important than the fact that we've already fought for this. And it's bullshit we have to again. I mean, think about this. Back when voting made a difference. We voted for a, a two-party system rather than a one-party system because we thought, hey, wait a minute, what if all, one party having all the power is a problem? Because they could become devious rulers. We cannot have devious rulers. We cannot have tyranny in the ranks, which means that we need as a nation to have a resolve towards individuality. At the same time as being united in cause. I'm, I'm, I got a dry throat. I'm trying to do this all in one take, so pardon me, alright? United under one main cause. What does that mean to you? To me, it means united in freedom, basic liberties, the ability to, if you want to, carry a fucking gun on your hip, carry a rifle on your back, fully fucking loaded. And I mean fully loaded, magazine in the clip, round chambered, right and proper. Because you are working towards the defense of the nation as a whole, not the defense of yourself singular or the offense from yourself singular remember that yes our nation understands that the best defense is a good offense but at the same time that good offense means shit if you're using it to destroy your own guys how smart is that I mean it's simple Sun Tzu and um Statistics, if you kill half your army against a greater force with no strategic resolve, you will fail. With no strategic resolve, your battle is based in numbers and numbers alone, which means that your situation is based in numbers. (laughs) Evidence of this... Y'all with the black hoodies know what I'm talking about. (laughs) I'm sorry, but you put yourselves out there. 
You're a bunch of jackasses and you know it. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Not bad. No tripod. And yeah, it's a cell phone. So anyways, yeah, if you're going to put yourself out there, expect to be joked about. And if you swing at me, expect to get your ass knocked the fuck out. I ain't playing. That's a dead serious reality. You swing at me, I'm going to knock your shit in. And I ain't going to stop till somebody's pulling me off of your carcass. Do you understand? <laughs> you cannot, for the life of you as a young adult, understand the difference between being hurt and being hurt really bad. Not unless you've actually had experience in that. And the ones who have had experience in that, I'm going to tell you, most of them are conservatives and the vast majority of those conservatives consider themselves independent conservatives. Okay? Not Republican conservatives. They want individuality at the same time as they want unity. Because that is our nation. That is what we are built after. The unity of individuals after a common cause. And communism is not a fucking common cause. That is a... A defunct form of government that does not work and we've seen it. And before you say, but China... China is communist capitalist. Okay? Don't say, oh, but China, and think that you're fucking coming across as intelligent. China is communist capitalist, which means that there is a ruling party an even dictation wage amongst the lower class not the upper echelon, all right? And <laughs> this is why it's so fucking retarded that you guys say this. I mean, it's almost exactly mirrored off the American uh, independent republic. The only difference is, is that it is wholly and completely communist by its very enunciation as communist. But beyond that, okay, we're saying it is literally America backwards. I, I hate that it's come to this, but it, that is what this is. China is America backwards. It is communist capital, a capitalist. They run off of an economic society based on consumerism and forced slave labor. And when I say forced slave labor, I mean, if you don't work, you don't eat. And if you work, you still may not eat. Unless you work really, 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 really hard to the point where you drop from working. So, just so you know, that's how China is. And if you Fucktards think you want that here. Guess what? There's a place you could go <laughs> that they will take you. They will really take you in and they will put your ass in a prison camp just to discern that you are not actually against their regime and then they will take you in as communist capitalists and put your ass in a fucking labor camp. And if you think I'm lying, go right ahead. It's all you. <sighs> I can't stand stupid. <laughs> Y'all are just, you know, as far as that goes, I cannot rant on Antifa enough. And anyone who stands with those dumb asses, I mean... What are you standing for? <laughs> Hypocrisy! <laughs> 
It knows no bounds, brother. <laughs> so, just simmer down on that shit, all right? I mean, your butts are so covered in horse shit as it is, you don't need to be go stepping in more cattle pies. <clears throat> so, what else? I'm sorry, y'all. I freaking anti. <laughs> it, that's almost a freaking a full on a comedy routine. If it wasn't so deadly serious, it would be. <sighs> okay, so we've gone over that, like beating it with a, like a dead horse with a stick after freaking having rats run out of it. We're done with that. <laughs> So, yeah, it, the situation in our nation is pretty freaking ass backwards to the way that the Founding Fathers originally presented. And when people say, oh, but the Founding Fathers, I, don't talk to me like that. Please. You're not endearing yourself. You're making yourself sound like a dumbass. Most of the time, everything that's said about the Founding Fathers is not true. In the militia, we actually have to learn our history on that. Because we have a specific knowledge that's been passed down through the ranks. And that is, is that America has always stood for freedom and liberty. And it is on the back of the American militia and citizens like you that this even happens. The military, for the last more than a hundred years, has been in the interest alternative. Yeah, we fought on the same, the same battle lines back in the day. Great, awesome. What are, uh, what does that mean to you now? I mean. Officers of the law, federal agents, military personnel on leave and retired. I'm speaking to you. Citizens with specific training, hunters, outdoorsmen, trackers. Sharpshooters, Olympic sharpshooters. I'm talking to you. Get it in your heads. This is the situation. We're up shit's crick and we just lost the paddle out the back of the boat. It's drifting away with the current, bud. At this point, we've got few options. I hate that idea. At any point where we have few options, where our options are depleted, that is a situation that becomes entanglingly dangerous. And it continues to become more and more so. We're seeing fighting in the streets and it's only, it's only a short hour before it becomes spilling out into the countryside where Minuteman patrols we're gonna have to deal with it too y'all can't keep your stupid in the city and it is spilling out here you know and, and, and I have to ask where's your form of responsibility out here, we're responsible for our actions. If we fuck up, we have to deal with it. Everything we do gets filed in a damn report. And I mean everything. <laughs> if 
I go out on a long patrol, you can guarantee there is some form of written record of anything that I find, anything that I come upon, or even if it is a non-eventful patrol. That is the situation that we are now facing. As American citizens, you need to be on this point. You need to be understanding that there's a situation out there in front of you. And if you're not going to help, then shut the fuck up and get out the way. We don't have very long before we don't have, you know, we hit the point of no return. Before we hit the point of absolute chaos going to ensue and going to be no coming back from. I mean, we've bounced back as a nation time and time and time and time again. We've been excellent at it because that's who we are. We don't go down. We're good at that. We stand up. Every time we get knocked down, it's like, fuck you, I'm getting back up, motherfucker. You ain't stopping me. <laughs> because that's who we are. As a nation, as a people, we are empowered by our knowledge that only through standing up to those who would try to knock us down are we strong? It, it has nothing to do with being the baddest motherfucker on the planet. No. It has to do with... Get the fuck back up. Let's do it again. You got knocked down. Get your ass up. Let's go. Hurrah. Get up. And that's the point you need to understand. That's the point you need to keep understanding. And that's the point you can never forget. Continuing forward, get up, get on it. Do the right thing, it needs to be done. Don't wait around for permission. Don't wait around for somebody to tell you, uh, yep, okay, go do it. Get your ass on it. The fuck you waiting around for, permission? <laughs> so, it, you know, just keep in mind that <laughs> I'm sorry, Guardsman Om came out there. Um, keep in mind that we don't have as many options as before. You have to have that aggressive exterior. You have to have that resolve to do the right thing, to do those things that nobody else is going to do, that nobody else wants to do because they're lazy or they're cowards and they're complacent in their thought that, oh, it'll never affect me. Uh, there's so many out there that are there to protect me. I'm never going to have somebody come up behind me and try and knock me out. I'm never going to have somebody try and tear me apart in the middle of public because that, that just never happens. It, it's so rare. Enough of the fucking melodrama. Grow the fuck up. <laughs> it's not that rare. It happens all the goddamn time. Scars to prove right here. Scars to prove right here. You can see my nose is crooked. The reality of the situation is, is that's all from having to fight for my life. Not because I like fighting. Not because I enjoy Kung Fu and having to beat somebody's ass. I practice Kung Fu so I don't have to fight. So that I don't have to get out there and knock somebody's ass out. I practice Kung Fu so that I have enough self-respect that I don't want to fight this person. And until they attempt to strike first, I'm not going to move. But when I move, I'm going to move so fast that it's going to make people scared of me. Because the situation is, I don't have the same amount of time as somebody else. But I can move that fast. This is the reason why I extol people who go out and learn self-defense, who learn how to utilize a firearm, who you learn how to do these things 
because they need to because not because they want to it's not because you want to go and do it that you fucking go do it <laughs> i mean yeah a lot of folks will be out there and be like i love shooting guns I've, so do i i love shooting guns that doesn't mean that i love watching people get hurt that doesn't mean I love having to hurt somebody. <laughs> that is something that I, it's far from. I, I abhor it intensely. I hate the fact that if somebody tries to harm me, I have no choice but to show them that they made a fucking fatal mistake. And in doing so, there is only one outcome from that. Oh, well, maybe two, if I'm lucky. One, I die. Two, I go to jail. And that's the reality of the situation. You don't get no other outcome from that. You either die or you go to jail. If you have to hurt somebody, you go to jail. Even if you're the person who was defending yourself or defending another person, you go to jail because they can't be sure. And when I say they, I mean law enforcement. They cannot be sure until they've looked at everything, talked to everyone in the situation and seen how you react afterwards. How will your demeanor be afterwards? Are you gonna feel hurt? Are you gonna feel like your country has gone back on you? That's normally what's gonna happen. You're gonna feel like, hey man, I've been fucked over. Well, the truth is, nobody fucked you over. Law enforcement is trying to help you. <laughs> it really is, you know? I, I, and before you say, oh, you're one of those fucking stupid asses that believe they're out there to help. You know, I understand. Sometimes law enforcement officers do not uphold the law. That is not a law enforcement officer. That is a killer in a costume, a creep in a badge. And that is all that that is. That is not a police officer. And you police officers know I'm telling the truth. And you probably would say the same yourselves. The law enforcement officers are trying to help you. They're trying to do the right thing just like you are. So let them. Work with them. Nine times out of ten, whatever dispute there was, if, if it was stupid, is going to be hammered out and y'all are going to be fine afterwards. Never be the aggressor. Something I actually learned from karate as a young man. Never be the aggressor. Be the defender. Because as a defender, you can make the right decisions. Your decisions are based on the other person's actions. <laughs> and the other person's actions dictate yours. Which is why you don't have any... Uh... What, how would I say it? Any competent guilt in a situation like that. Because your actions have already been predetermined by the actions of another. Your options are lay there and die or fight back. Not rocket science. Clearly. Not rocket science, don't lay there and die, fight back. Hit them, hit them hard, hit them again, hit them again, hit them again. And never stop until somebody's pulling you off their bloody ass carcass. Because the reality of the situation is, is you may not survive otherwise. I'm a tough son of a bitch, I've been through it and I actually almost died. When I say almost died, I was dead for two and a half minutes on top of the operating table with the surgeon sitting there reaching up into my heart and uh, reaching up into my chest cavity and massaging my heart to get it pumping again. 
Don't be a fool. If you have to fight, fight back hard. Don't go light at first when you think, oh, you know, he's, he's probably going to give up. No, he ain't going to give up. You fuck his ass up. Don't wait around. Because if you're waiting around, you're going to get your ass kicked. The more time you spend fighting is the more time they have to hit you. Stop the fight. Win by stopping the fight. <laughs> I mean, for the longest time, I thought Master Wong had a, a lot right. And then, Master Dewey came on the scene and he's pointing out some things that I think are very true. About form, about specific manner and uses. However, there's only one sitting dragon spot open. So as a martial artist, you know, you have to have things right, especially as a sitting dragon. You have to have everything right. <laughs> You ain't worth shit. You have to uphold yourself. You uphold the code of the, of the martial arts and the ways of the martial arts. That's what keeps the ways of the martial arts alive. So, Master Dewey, since I know that you may in the future get a chance to see this video, <sighs> Shifting sand, I apologize. As one of the nine sitting dragons, you have my nomination. Come into the fold, sir. And as for the rest of this video, because I only got a couple seconds left, I want you all to understand our situation is pretty fucked up. We're in a bad place right here in the United States. To all the rest of you, my friends out there, stay strong, keep your head on a swivel. American Patriots Forever Freedom. Commodore Price signing off.